friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today I'm going to talk to you about a bunch of the books that I hope to read in the month of May. This year I decided to do my TBRs a little bit differently in that I'm just going to talk about a whole bunch of books that I've pulled out from my library or off of my shelves to put in a separate spot that are maybe, maybe I'm going to read them piles for the month. Instead of having a specific set of books that I'm definitely going to read, I'm kind of keeping things a little bit more fluid and open in order to give myself some freedom to mood read and see where things go. I wasn't able to do that in March because of middle grade March, nor did I do it in April because of Book buddy a thon and book list readathon, both of which I had pretty specific TBRs for. So I'm very excited this month. I have different piles of books here of things that I would like to get to. We'll just see where things go for the month of May. The first pile I have are four books that are off of my TBR cart for recommendations that you guys gave me. And the first two slash three are for my Goodreads read along group for the month of May. In May, we're doing something I've never done before in that we're just doing a choose your own Agatha Christie for the month of May. So I have two Agatha Christie that were recommended to me. So I'll definitely be reading and then there were none. And I'll also be reading the ABC murders. I have about eight others that are in this edition that I could possibly get to. But if I'm in the mood for even another Agatha Christie, I really want to read Murder on the Orient Express. So I have these three Agatha Christie's that possibly I'll get to during the month of May. Uh, if you're part of my Goodreads read along, read some of these with me or choose your own Agatha Christie that's been on your shelf for a while or something that you've been waiting to get to. I am not sure yet how I'm going to set the group up as far as dis discussion goes for the month, but I am looking forward to finally getting to, in particular, these two, Murder on the Orient, and then there were none, because these are two of the most popular ones, but then this one was also recommended to me as well, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading some mystery. Then I thought, let me pull out two other mysteries that are on my cart, and maybe we'll just call it hashtag mystery May. <laughs> I know there are other times of year where there's official readathons like Cloak and Dagger in December, and um, during March as well, there's March Mystery Madness readathon. So there are other month long mystery readathons, but I'm like, you know what, let's just do a mystery May. And I also pulled off Maisie Dobbs from my, from that recommendation shelf by Jacqueline Winspear and also Leanne Moriarty's What Alice Forgot, which is kind of a contemporary about a woman who sort of has amnesia. She wakes up and 10 years have passed and she doesn't know and her life is totally different than where it was 10 years before. So a bit of a mystery there. I love Leanne Moriarty and think that that will be fun. So that's my pile of mysteries. Then I have enjoyed in January and February kind of choosing a word or a theme of books just as a way to kind of randomly pull some books off my shelf. And so because April showers bring May flowers, I found a pile of books that all have to do with gardening or flowers. So I pulled off six books and they're kind of in order of how I would like to read them. So let me show you this pile. I did read a Sarah Addison Allen book in April and absolutely loved it. I read with the girl who, what was it? The girl who chased the moon. So I thought I would read Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. She has a bit of magical elements to her books and um, really would love to read another one of hers. And it was a, um, it, it's pretty short, so I feel like it'll be a pretty quick read. And then I really am eager to read another Susan Meisner book. So A Fall of Marigolds has come very highly recommended by a ton of people. And I believe this was on my recommendations cart as well. Um, so that would knock off another one of those. This one has two timelines, historical fiction. Both happen in uh, September of 1911 and then 100 years later, September 2011. So we're going to deal with uh, some terrorist attacks and the World Trade Center falling. I just know this is going to break my heart, but... Uh, has to do with flowers with the word marigolds. Then I have just a contemporary kind of sweet fiction here called The Sweet Smell of Magnolias and Memories by Celeste Fletcher McHale and I'm not exactly sure what this one is about. This one is a fiction guild book which I'm hoping to read a bunch of the fiction guild books this year as well and I have not been doing very good at that so this is going to be a Christian fiction um, and I'm just excited to possibly get to that. Then I have a modern classic I believe Flowers for Algernon by Danielle Keyes. I have a book by Allison Richmond called The Garden of Letters and I believe this is a historical fiction 
yeah, Italy, 1943. So possibly some World War II stuff going on in that one. And then another Fiction Guild book called Perennials by Julie Cantrell. So these are the flower slash garden books. I'm not sure which of those I'll get to, but I'm just going to keep them out as kind of potentials for the month. Then let's see, I have two books. I have two books currently out from the library, which are um, series that I'd like to make progress in, um, but ones that I don't uh, own. So I have, they're both YA fantasy. So I have Ruin and Rising, which would complete the Grisha trilogy. I did read Siege and Storm in April, so it would be really nice to complete that trilogy. That's by Lee Bardugo. And then Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. This is a chunker, but it is going to be a quick read if it's anything like Scythe. And I loved Scythe, so um, I'd like to read this one before the third one comes out, I believe, in the fall sometime. So I am eager to read those two library books. I have a nonfiction that I recently hauled called Little Princes, um, One Man's Promise to Bring Home the Lost Children of Nepal by Connor Grennan. This is about a man, a young man who goes on some travels. In the midst of all his adventuring, he discovers this home in Nepal where uh, children who he thought were orphans are actually not. And they were taken from their families and now are kept in these homes. And it's his, he kind of makes it his mission to return these children to their families, which just, I feel like it's going to break my heart and put it back together again, I hope. So I'm very interested in reading this nonfiction if I'm looking for something a little on the serious side. And then I have three books that uh, were sent to me. I won this first one in a giveaway uh, through Pages Ago Book Club on Instagram, and it's by Jillian Cantor, and it's called In Another Time. This one, uh, we followed two perspectives of a couple. The male, Max, we follow him in the years leading up to World War II, and, and then the girl, Hannah, we follow her uh, following like maybe 10 years after World War II, in Germany. So uh, kind of an interesting story of their love and their relationship in the midst of with kind of World War Two being a big part of their story. I believe Max is German and Hannah is Jewish. So um, there's a little bit of forbidden love in there, I suppose. Then these two books both come out in May and I'm so thankful to Atria Books for sending these to me. I did request them and I very rarely request books, but how could I not request Frederick Bachman's first foray into nonfiction? This is called Things My Son Needs to Know About the World. I just love Frederick Bachman's writings and even in his fiction books, he often has very profound thoughts to ponder. Uh, so I think that this will be a really um, interesting and fun read from him. Some of the topics he's going to discuss in this are how to find the team you belong to, why airports explain everything about religion and war, the reason starting a band is crucial to cultivating and keeping friendships, how to beat Monkey Island 3, and why sometimes a dad might hold on to his son's hand just a little too tight. I think this will be poignant and heartfelt and funny at times. I'm just really looking forward to reading this. It's also pretty short, so I feel like it'll be a quick fun read from Bachman. Bachman. And finally, I have the book, uh, The Daughter's Tale, which is another World War II. Armando Lucas Correa wrote The German Girl, which I own but haven't yet read. I've also heard good things about that one, but this one tells kind of a untold story of World War II. This young girl, Judith, is so, it's based on her true life story about her family and a German the Nazis just kind of destroying this French village where she lived at the time her family had tried to escape on the ship that went to Cuba Cuba rejected them they tried to land in the States the States rejected them and they ended up back in Europe in this French village but then the Nazis showed up and took them all to Auschwitz. So yeah, I just know this will be a tearjerker. This also comes out on May 7th. So I'd like to read it and let you guys know about it in the month that it actually comes out. So in case you're interested in reading it. So that is it. I have quite a few. The only two I definitely know I'm going to get to are these two Agatha Christie's because these are the first two because they were the ones that were recommended on my cart and that's for my Goodreads group. Hey, later Krista here. Um, I forgot one book that I'm definitely going to be reading in May, and that is The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton. I'm going to be buddy reading this with April from Getting Hunger With It and Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. So I can't believe I forgot this. 
I love Kate Morton. I have not yet read all of her books, but this is her newest and I'm super excited. I'm expecting dual timeline. I'm expecting a little bit of mystery. The summary at the end of the the, the summary at the end of the summary says, intricately layered and told by multiple voices across time. This is a kaleidoscopic story of murder, mystery, and thievery of art, love, and loss. And flowing through its pages like a river is the voice of a woman who stands outside time, whose name has been forgotten by history, but who has watched it all unfold. Birdie Bell, the clockmaker's daughter. Ooh, I'm very excited to read this with April and Bethany and I can't believe I forgot to include it earlier. Now back to whatever I was saying before. <laughs> Other than that, everything is kind of up in the air. So I have a lot of choices and I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to get back to the mood reading of things. I may veer away from these if the mood hits, but I do have, I feel like I have a good chunk of books to choose from so it should be a good reading month i've been averaging about 12 books a month um outside of march which is when i read tons more than that so we've got the garden books we've got the mysteries we've got the books that were sent to me this month and a couple library books so lots of choices i would love to hear from you in the comments below if there are any any of these that you're particularly interested in hearing me talk about or any of these that you've read and you loved or didn't love i always love talking with you down in the comments. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be talking to you again in another video very soon. Bye!